I'm Nate Jackson. And I'm Evan Britton. And this is the Caveman Poet Society. I have made two trips to, uh, to National Football League meetings uh, with, with head coaches. And the most recent one met with the, the medical staff most concerned with concussions. And one guy jumped up and down at the information. And unfortunately, that guy is no longer with us. But the other guy definitely did not like that. And that particular person, uh, you know, is uh, whatever, for whatever reason, he saw me in the light that, that's not favorable. I mean, basically, you're not a traditional medical guy. Uh, get out of here. Welcome to another episode of the Caveman Poet Society. I'm Evan Britton, joined as always by my brother, Nathan Jackson. Nate, how are you, man? Good, man. Real good. How are you? Excellent. I'm excellent. Another, nice. another beautiful day in LA. It's cooling down. We got Jed Bauer on the ones and twos. Boom. Yeah. Of course, Gandalf. Gandalf. Yes. Gandalf the Great. But we got a great guest today. Really exciting guest. I'm stoked to jump into this conversation. Nate, who do we got? Well, today's guest, I am very excited to have him on. He's been a friend of mine for probably about 20 years now. Uh, I met this man when I was a college football player, playing for uh, Menlo College, and I had a lot of injuries. And Craig helped. Uh, he worked on my body. He has uh, a variety of techniques that he uses as a healer. He's a self-taught healer, uh, a recovery facilitator, if you will, and he's had a lot of remarkable results from injuries and concussions using a series of techniques that initiate the healing response in injured patients. But he's done this outside of the mainstream, outside of higher learning for the most part. He's basically a one-man band, and he'll tell you that. And oftentimes, the most revolutionary thinkers in a field must operate outside of the establishment. Uh, that's what Craig's doing. And I'd like to welcome my friend, Craig Matamo. How you doing, Craig? Okay. Hey, Nate. Hi, Eb. Thank you guys for having me on. I'm, uh, I'm literally, I don't know what I am. I'm jacked. I'm dispersed. I'm scattered. But I'm thrilled to be here and <laughs> awesome. uh, make, a really, make a strong statement about something that's important to talk about. Cool. No well, doubt, man. Let's launch right into that. Um, the, what we're talking about here is concussions and your website, concussion.info. Uh, before we get into what a concussion is, tell me how you got into working on the brain. Uh, definitely happy to do that. Let me just make one quick uh, correction. It's concussions, plural, dot info. Got it. Concussions okay. with an S, dot info. Nice. With an S, yeah. yeah. Concussions, plural. Uh, basically, I was doing uh, injury recovery field trials at Menlo College a few years, Nate, before you got there. They began in 95. And in 96, three guys showed up literally devitalized and asking for help because I had had such great results the year before, especially with ankles and everything, knees and turf toes and headaches and whatever it might have been. These guys came to see me, and it was like, are you kidding me? Three concussions at once? How can you bring me just one? You know, because nobody knows anything to do about it. This is in the uh, Steve Young prior to the Troy Aikman days when concussion was just starting to come into uh, more and more uh, publicity. So that's where it started. Can you explain what does devitalized mean? These guys had just very low energy. Were they uh, lifeless, wow. spiritless? What? How do great you? Great question, Evan. A great question. It's almost like, uh, man, we're we exchanging payroll checks here, or what? Yes. Uh, basically, basically, devitalized uh, to me is inspired. What's mm. the word in there? Spirit, inspired, and what's the opposite of devitalized? Dispirited. A concussed athlete is dispirited mm. for a lot of reasons but uh, but uh, but you guys when you guys were playing in the nfl uh, you're out there and you're healthy and you're happy and you're you're cracking the blocks on people and and doing what you need to do you guys are inspired and the, the difference literally could be stated between the difference between a happy well-adjusted person and a depressed or heartbroken person literally in life itself mm. and 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 is that how you would describe what a concussion is uh, the vital life force being gone 
uh, I, I would say it's being dis- it's been disturbed. Right. If, it, if it's supposed to be a calm lake, somebody just threw a rock in it. So it's disturbed, but its disturbance, since it is the governing force of life and living, it disrupts the physiology. Mm. And so you hear a concussion thrown around all the time. You also hear the term TBI, traumatic brain injury. What is the difference between those two? Wow, huge difference. Again, Nate, thank you. Um, essentially, guys, the traumatic brain injury when assigned to a con- hey. Concussion cases, you guys know this well. Some guys, unfortunately, don't recover for a week or two weeks or they, you know, they miss a couple of games. Watch the NFL concussion cases, which I do closely. Most of the guys, I'd say 50% of the guys are playing the following week, unless it's a Thursday oh, concussion yeah. or something sure. like that. Yeah. They're, they're playing. And, and how many of those guys are faking it or sliding past the, uh, the various tests? Uh, which, by the way, the tests, man, please just stick with the eye test. Get rid of all. Well, I shouldn't say that. The eye tests are the ones to go by. Uh, and they're they're getting better at that stuff, but yeah, the old the uh, old sorry to jump on you, but the old baseline assessment thing, the BAP test, we would or we'd have offensive linemen who knew they had head problems, yeah. and would intentionally fail it when they took the yeah. one, and so that if they got hurt and got it tested again, then if they failed it again, well, they already failed it, so that's they're fine. Yeah, it was common talk among players, like, oh, I failed that, I missed a few on purpose, <laughs> right? Because I know that when I have to take it again. You know, yeah. it's going to be a challenge, and I, I want to be guys, able to pass that. I'm in love here. You guys are great. I have a, one associate, one uh, lady up in Canada, Jenna Howe is her name, uh, who I've mentored through this. Uh, we were on the phone and the Internet for maybe 12 years before we finally met. Her, She was working with junior league hockey kids, okay? These, these are teens and sub-teens, and even they were already learning how to get past uh, all the tests. They, they, they knew mm. that they didn't need to feign the results. So, right. I mean, when, when you guys, when, you're, when, you, when you got a, you know, Ben Roethlisberger was out a couple of weeks ago. Well, he can do that, you know, at, at 20 mil a week. What is that? I mean, a, a year, what is that? 50 grand a year. Right. He can afford to take that. I mean, 50 grand a day. He can afford to take that time off and, and nobody's going to throw him off the roster. But if you're questionable or you're, you're right. you know, you're not going to be there. But a TBI, guys, to me, Look at the word. Injury applies, implies some kind of damage. It could be just a scrape. You could scrape your hand against a, a rough surface and not even draw blood, but the skin is torn, right? And that, that you've injured the tissue. But a concussion does not imply that. To me, a concussion is disturbed consciousness, life force, disrupted physiology. And what does that do? It disturbs or disables the synchronicity between the two. The, oh. di- the difference between... I mean, you've got to have that synchronicity. I mean, if you're drunk and you're going out for a route, Nate, I mean, I'm sure you've, you've had a few beers in the park and, and it went out for a pass, but chances are there's something that's missing there, Definitely, right? yeah. And, uh, yeah, five that's shots fascinating of Patron. That's hear that. And you, you've, you've blocked that. Well, it's that synchronicity that needs to be reinstated, and that's the key. So a traumatic brain injury is something where there's literally, they may not be able to prove it, and for years medical sciences are saying concussions don't produce any uh, any evidence at all of, of injury. But what happened is they got lazy. I'm sorry to say it goes back to a, uh, I, I don't really want to get into any names, but there was a memo given out uh, involved in a very big league in this world in the mid nineties. It said it was more academically appropriate to call a concussion, a traumatic brain injury. And I think the rest of the world by conjecture and speculation of the experts just bought onto it. But a traumatic brain injury to me is something I would be worried about. Not, not horribly so, because, you know, you have people recover from those as well. But a concussion is a disturbance in consciousness. There is no brain injury involved. So the, con- brain just so the concussion is worse than the TBI, potentially? No. Or, right. no. It's not. It's no, something it's that, can be, that can be uh, m- manipulated through, through s- uh, different techniques. Yes. And, and, and these are the guys. I mean, you guys tell me. I mean, please, your input is invaluable already. How many times did you see somebody get concussed? And maybe they didn't go to the team doctor or something like that, but they came off practice sideline, whatever, and said, holy shit, I just got my bell rung. And the next day they were okay. And then not, not bullshitting. You. They were oh, okay. Yeah. How many yeah. times? Did you see, did you... Many times. Yeah, it's happened, it's happened to me. Con- it's happened to me. That's and a, me. That's a concussion, guys. That's a concussion. If it's a traumatic brain injury, I don't care if it's swelling. I don't care if it's edema. I don't care if it's, a, uh, you know, there's some broken cells, torn axons, all this stuff. There's so much speculation in this area. And God bless those guys that do that. I wouldn't want to wear their hat. The neural world, N-E-U-R-O, those guys are stuck inside that matrix of the brain. And uh, basically, I think they're, uh, this, this is why there's no treatments for this. Right. They, they can't figure out what's going dysfunctional. And so how do you treat it? 
Uh, I'm so far past that, and I don't mean that to be in an exalted or uh, egotistical way. I'm just confident because I've seen this work so many times. This is We're talking about a one-treatment address with concussed, otherwise healthy, competitive athletes. Uh, one treatment, 90, better than 90% of the cases respond immediately. We'll talk a little bit about that treatment and and what it entails, physically what you do, uh, maybe what you say to the athlete, and what the recovery time looks like for someone who, as you just described, has one concussion and is otherwise healthy. When somebody comes through the door, basically I let them know that they have the natural ability to recover. And, and I think we all know that. If you're on a desert island and you get a cold, you don't necessarily need all the medications or, or supplements that we would take to get better. You'll get better. It might not be as quick as you want but you, you have the ability to recover. So the first thing I want to do is elevate the devitalized uh, element somewhat. You know, they, they come, you can, guys come in pretty, I've never seen somebody happy uh, come see me for a treatment or mm-hmm. even address somebody on the sidelines at Menlo. I mean, a lot of times I saw the concussion happen and I saw them go to the, the trainer and the doctor and then the next day they would come to see me, which is the proper way to do this. Always, 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 you want to go see your team doctor, your neuro, whoever your handlers are and let them do whatever they're going to do run the baselines, run the tests, who's the president, would you have for breakfast, all of that stuff. But it's actually management. It's not treatment. The treatment comes from the Bowen technique, which is an Australian modality, B-O-W-E-N, a fabulous modality that um, came to my attention by two uh, important females in my life, literally in 1995. Two women who had never met each other, one a nurse, uh, many years at UC, and one a spiritual counselor who is still a, a rock in my life, And they both said, you should check out this cowboy healer up in the mountains of Auburn named Milton Albrecht doing this Australian modality for for body rebalancing. And that's how it all started. I went and saw a demonstration, eventually took the courses from that guy. And weeks afterwards, my brother, who's an all-state kicker in Hawaii and a soccer player playing dual sports at Menlo, calls me up and says, man, I got a groin pull. Can you help me? And I'm thinking... What the hell is a groin pull, man? It sounds like you've been spending too much time in the back room or something. And he goes, no, it's a big muscle going down the inside of my leg, and I can't kick. And he's a, he's a soccer-style kicker. I came down, treated him. He responded so well. We were just trying to talk about this a couple of weeks ago. Was he kicking 85% that night or the day of the treatment, or was it the next day? But no matter what, his big Samoan roommate came up with a neck. His brother came up with an ankle. And the next thing you know, nine years later, I finally walked off that campus with a whole lot of evidence. And so when you're treating these guys with a Bowen technique, you are literally putting hands on their body, on the injured, on the area of the injury, but also you're putting them on different areas of the body. Describe what determines where you put your hands and, and what technique you use on the body. It's a great question uh, and statement. And they basically uh, it's not necessarily on the injury, I mean, sometimes you're on the injury, but basically you try to avoid it. And it's a, it should be uh, clarified as a non-massage type of body work. Uh, in a concussion case or even in, uh, let's say, a shoulder case, like Nate, when I was with you, what would I do? I would treat you. I would, I would, you, you were ankles and knees and, and, and hips and shoulders, right? And so I would treat you maybe, maybe five or six moves, and then I would go to the next table, and I would treat Mana or whoever else was sitting there waiting. And essentially, you're addressing critical points. You're, you're addressing... Uh, the, 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 like the L2, L3 area, you're addressing the side of the buttocks, which is a, which is addressing a, uh, something known as the, uh, the the piriformis muscle for, for the sciatic nerve, the back of the hamstrings, yeah. the up the upper the upper respiratory area from the backside in between the shoulder blades, uh, and, and the muscles that are actually balancing the head. Uh, uh, the, the, you know, they're they're running from the shoulder blades up. When you turn the person over, you're addressing the neck. And in and, and a concussion case, always a jaw. When I, my first teacher said a concussion is nothing more than a jaw. And I thought that that was true, and it, it, it was not true. But it's probably the one move that if I – I've actually treated drunken girls in this apartment complex. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 where they were having parties after the Menlo games, and uh, I treated one girl's jaw and because she said she was having horrible headaches and a lot of concussion-like symptoms, and she was a, a soccer player. And uh, three days later, this uh, $75 bouquet comes down from Oregon where her mother lives. So thank you. My daughter's been looking for uh, some help with this for years and years, and uh, uh, who knows? And I, I, n- I never really talked to her much again, but uh, that's the kind of thing that happens. So you're addressing the body in critical points, but what you're doing is you're actually setting it up for uh, energetic stabilization, rebalancing. Mm. So, so are those points you just described that you touch, are those uh, like 
neurological or energetic hubs where a lot of like you know nerves pass through or what why those areas and what does it do i mean why are you touching those specific areas yeah i would say it's hard it's hard to avoid something that isn't both of those definitions uh, it's like medians and uh, uh, and trigger points in the body and it's hard to avoid them uh, but essentially what they are is key sensory input locations that are going to result in motor output you know, you're, you're out somewhere in the world and a mosquito lands on your arm. That sensory input, even though it's very light, causes you to look over there. And then you do whatever you do about it. You smack it, you swat it, you blow it away or something like that. What we're trying to do is take a traumatized body and restore its ability to self-assess itself. When you get, when you get concussed, the ability to self-assess, therefore, the ability to self-police, self-repair, uh, self-maintain is gone. It's literally gone. We're trying to reinstate that. And it, it's, it's literally amazing, guys, to see that, you know, the first three guys, I mean, I got three guys a year for, for nine years, I mean, for, for up to 2009, and it was, like, hard to present this to people. But you, you don't really know what's happening until enough of these cases go by. But essentially, it's, they're, they're critical points that allow the nervous system to reawaken from the, the, the traumatic slumber that has been put in by, with a concussion. Mm. When I, I've had so many hamstrings injuries over the years. And when, whenever you get a hamstring injury in football, they put you on the table, they put a stimulation pads on you. They put the, they put the ice there. You do that for 30 minutes. They do ultrasound before practice. They do manual stretching, manual, you know, massage. They do specific exercises to strengthen your hamstring again. And from what I'm hearing you say, they are, they are removing the body's ability to heal itself naturally by putting all that shit on it. Is that correct? Well, you know what, Nate, and I, I wouldn't be quite that harsh because I know a lot of good people are trying a lot of good ways to get things done. But when I see injuries on the field, you know, I'm an, I'm an NFL guy. I, mean, I, love the, I love the game. I don't like what's going on with a lot of the, the, the nuances of it. But uh, essentially, those are interventions. And it's almost like, uh, I mean, uh, allopathic medicine uh, basically wants to do drugs or surgery. And sometimes drugs and surgery are exactly what you need. Hey, you know, if I if I uh, I get hit by a car crossing the intersection, I don't want somebody giving me a massage. I don't want a bowling therapy coming up trying to fix my foot. You know, I want the EMT guys there. I, w- I want to be taken care of with with the, with the proper procedures. But I never thought whenever I don't know if we ever treated you in the actual training room. But a couple of years later, or a couple of years earlier, I was allowed to be in the training room before they banned me from the campus. And uh, essentially, when guys would come in with a certain injury, the trainer would look at me kind of cockeyed because what I would do and what he would do were completely different things. I yep. would address a hamstring by going across the uh, insertion point, uh, uh, the origin point at the bottom of the pelvis, and then I would go down to the uh, near to the insertion point just above the knee, and I would address that in, two, in ways that basically are giving information to the central nervous system that the, that the muscle needs to be readdressed, reassessed by the body. So essentially, I'm not at cause, and the protocol, the, the procedure is not at cause, nor is the athlete. It's sort of like the combined genius of the body and the excellent uh, superiority of consciousness working together in maximum harmony. You just highlighted a little bit of the, you know, the contrast between your techniques and these trainers' techniques, and not only, you know, are the techniques that you use different and the setting in this in this training room, but kind of the setting that you create at your apartment, for example, which is where I used to go to get treated by you. It's it's there ha- there is a spiritual element of the work you do to the work you do. Um, can you describe how mindfulness? and spirit go into this healing process and what you do? I absolutely, uh, are, I'm happy to address that. Uh, the, the, the spiritual uh, spirituality, and I hate to get into any areas where we go into dogma and uh, religious stuff, and, but and, because they're, they're so misunderstood, it is the driver in my life. There's no question about it. And I believe that the, 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 the recent uh, addition to the protocol that I use which is an energetic stabilization process, definitely is that comes from uh, the realms of you actually you actually saw the uh, uh, the the, the uh, Indian saint who was in Los Angeles. Nate, you you were there with a friend. Yeah. Uh, when I was there, and that guy is a formally declared national treasure of the government of India. He passed away five years ago. Uh, the Kalishwar. What was his name? Yes, Kalishwar. Yes, yep. Shri S R I Shri Kalishwar. Uh, th- these guys don't last that long, you know. I mean, they just they're carrying such a load. But um, essentially, 
uh, the, the, that's where the consciousness aspect comes from. If I look at if I look at the um, concussions and football injuries from a from a just strictly from an injured point, let's take a, let's take a dislocated knee. I've had nine or ten patellar dislocations, which uh, none of them were fun. But in the end, I was able to reset the knee myself. I don't know if it's because there was I was so looser uh, I couldn't do it. But you could do a great deal uh, by just putting a hand on somebody's uh, injured body part. Uh, especially if you care for that person or you love them, one of the greatest healing elements in the world is a mother's love. Real simple. The kid gets the truck run over in the driveway or his favorite toy. The dog dies. The bicycle gets stolen. What does mom do? You know, mom's the one who births. If dad works too, but there's nothing like mom. And mom says it's going to be okay, honey. And is it? No, it's the shits. You know, the truck just run over. The dog's dead. You know, whatever it might be. But that love is actually restorative. And essentially, uh, placing hands on with somebody who's skilled at doing that and that's their intention they maintain that intention is uh to me it's a it's probably better than 50 percent of the whole thing well so now is that is that energy work craig is that part of the bowen technique no it is not but it, that's not fair to say the bowen technique tells people tells its uh, uh, practitioners to set the intention at the beginning of the of the treatment hmm. and i and i think and i'm actually is scheduled to speak to uh uh, the, the original uh, people who bought the Bowen technique around the planet, it's now, it's, it's, it's enjoying a good planetary presence. But I'm scheduled to speak to them. They're very old. They recently texted me, want to know how things were coming with this, and, and I, I, want, I need to speak with them on the phone. But they set the intention. Well, that intention is good. It's like, I'm going to have a great day today. But then you go out in the world and you've got a flat tire, or maybe you don't. Maybe, uh, you know, there's traffic jam or something like that. What happened to that intention? I'm going right. to have a great day. You forgot it. Yeah, the, the energetic restabilization is continuous. It's not forgotten. It's it's maintained directly. So no, that's that's something that comes from uh, a whole other world for me in addressing uh, concussions. But keep in mind, it was the Bowen technique that got me through the first ten years of this. Uh, it was strictly the Bowen technique. But my intention was good, and and I probably just wasn't aware of uh, I w- wasn't aware of my energetic work. Now I am very much aware of that. Sure, that's part of the problem. What I think is so fascinating thinking about the uh, juxtaposition of your technique, how you work with athletes to how a typical athletic trainer in, in any college or NFL team is doing things is, you know, those guys are fi- are focused very much on the physical material, on the physical body, whereas you're starting to incorporate much more the emotional body, the energetic body, you know, even the spiritual body in the work that you do. You know, I've looked into the eyes of guys who are concussed. I've been concussed myself, and it is a total devitalization of the human, the human machine, uh, for lack of a better term. So to hear you talk in those terms, you know, it sounds almost revolutionary, although, you know, you know... You know, the more you learn about some of these more esoteric traditions in Ayurveda or in traditional Chinese medicine, you know, these these ancient cultures utilize these types of practices much more than we do in Western medicine. Um, oh man, Evan, you, you're you're on it. I, I think uh, Nate told me you are uh, uh, you're about ready to get your shaman certificate. Sounds like it. Well, it's it's a passion of mine. This this type of work, and I believe deeply in it. So. How did you come to that? How did you come to incorporating the energetic healing in with this, the Bowen technique? Basically, I have a great uh, friend, the same woman who uh, uh, literally right now is leading, she's leading a retreat in Assisi, Italy, at places where Jesus was. And she's, she's there right now with, a, with a, you know, I don't know how many people. But she actually is one of the two women, not the nurse, but the, the nurse, and she both said there's this, uh, this fabulous cowboy healer up in the mountains of Northern California near Lake Tahoe, Milton Albrecht, who's teaching this Bowen technique. Uh, you need to go check it out. I, I'm, I'm a writer. I'm a technical writer. I'm working on writing projects. What the hell do I know about any of this stuff? What do you want, what do you want me to do this? You know. But, but I, went, I saw an observation. I took a great friend of mine there who was really banged up. This guy's a Vicodin eater and a weed smoker and a, and not to put any negatives on that, but I mean, overdoing everything, right? Five sure. Vicodins at one time. And so uh, the, the guy who's giving the demonstration, Gene Dobkin, great original Bowen instructor in the United States, 
said, uh, who wants to volunteer? And this guy's wife, uh, Annie, my friend, elbows him in the ribs and up to bust a rib. He's like, get your ass up there. And he gets up on the table and he lays down. And the instructor of a Bowen uh, lecturer looks at him and he goes, Jesus, look at this lunkhead. I mean, he never even met this guy. But he can't even lay. His legs are different. His butt's up in the air. One shoulder's higher than the other. His neck won't rotate. Mm. You know, and, he, and the guy's 35 years old. You know, sure. and uh, but but essentially the uh, um, the, the the whole spiritual aspect came in from the woman who reoriented me to Bowen, and she was already somebody. I you get a feeling. You meet somebody in your life. I just got a feeling. I don't need to look at all for spiritual stuff. I'm just going to follow her wherever she goes. Because she had said to me someday a book. Uh, a recording, uh, a, a movie, a photograph is going to trigger you, and it's going to awaken some stuff in you that you're going to see. And when you do that, just follow that. And I said, "The hell with that. I'm, not, I'm, 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 I'm running around drinking highballs and smoking joints. Why should I? Why, why should I do that? I'm going to, I'm going to follow you." And I did, and she led me right there. Wow. Um, I, 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 I wish I could tell you all the things that I've learned from that particular spiritual tradition. It's, uh, it's amazing, but it's uh, way off the point. But essentially, Evan, it's not off the point when we reorient back to what you were saying about all the Eastern um, uh, the Eastern practices that are more, I would say, more consciousness-oriented. She actually wrote a book called Eastern Wisdom, Western Minds. And the goal of Kalashwar, who's the, uh, the, the gentleman that, that Nate saw in L.A. at the Agape Center, mm. uh, was to merge these two together. Mm. It's like, man, if we could, if we could merge the, the knowledge uh, of the West and the and technology of the West with the, 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 the knowledge of who we really are with the East, uh, there's hope for the planet. But uh, short of that, uh, we got a whole lot of friction going on. No doubt, man. Well, that's exactly what you're doing, man. You're merging it, and uh, we're going to keep on talking, merging, but we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. The public is accepting this, and that doctors and physicians are accepting this now, this injury tent. <laughs> what, what's happening yeah. in this tent? Why, Why do you have to hide what you're doing with this young man in here in this concussion situation? Because the whole world should be able to see you getting him to repeat alphabets back to you and numbers back to you and follow your eye and your, your pen and all these other things and to talk to you so everyone can see whether or not this player is ready to go back out. But we just see Russell Wilson pop out. I'm fine. That was NFL lineman Kyle Turley speaking on the Caveman Poet Society. His episode and many, many more are available now wherever podcasts can be found. Welcome back, everybody. We are here with our man Craig talking concussion protocol, concussion recovery protocol. Um... And uh, we wanted to launch into concussion recovery. How long does it take? What's the timeline, Craig? You know, uh, what can a young athlete expect? Or, you know, a guy in his 30s who's playing in the NFL in his 10th year in the league. You know, what are these guys looking at recovery-wise? Like you said earlier, many guys are getting concussed on Sunday and they're back on the field the next week. Um, and clearly not giving their brain enough time to heal, their their physiology enough time to heal from that uh, disruption. So give us a give us your take on what what that timeline really looks like. Well, let me uh, thank you that you really covered that whole area well. What I want to say is right now, and this is not going to be forever, but right now the protocol is applied uh, for any record keeping that I've done to otherwise healthy competitive athletes. In other words, concussed but otherwise healthy, okay? And the recovery uh, um, rate, immediately the, the shift occurs from being concussed and devitalized to smiling and happy and physically more animated and more outgoing literally within the first session. And it only requires one session. That's the part about it that's amazing. I mean, you, you get a chance to see this. I don't know how many people in the world, I don't care what your profession or your station is, how many people have seen a concussion recovery occur in front of them? That's all I see. Hmm. So, so, so they come in, they come in sad, and they and they leave happy, limp in and dance out. You betcha. No, <laughs> but, but basically, basically, what happens is, what would cause somebody to do that? How, how do you guys know that I'm not just full of beans, right? Well, there's a shift in their 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 symptoms. You know, right. maybe they got a ringing in the ears. Maybe they got a headache. It's an eight. 
you know, maybe their vision is disturbed, whatever it might be. There, I list about 30 symptoms on, on the website, and it looks to me like I think uh, traditional medicine is only actually formally recognized about seven, but maybe the rest of the world is looking at a couple of dozen. doesn't matter. But uh, What but are some of the, sorry, Craig, what are some of those symptoms that medicine doesn't recognize but that you have recognized? Well, I, I, I'll use things like fogginess and grogginess for, uh, you know, for, for head or body uh, you know, disori- disassociation or disorientation. And uh, in, in the sleep disorders, uh, that, that's pretty much commonly uh, recognized. But uh, you actually caught me on that one, Nate. I'm not even looking at the site at this particular that's okay. point. But, it, but, it's, but it's okay. I, I mean, essentially what happens is that when a guy goes through the shift, and that's right on the homepage of the website, it's one of the three uh, areas that are uh, uh, speaking directly about when you, the shift is initiated very simply. Uh, you know, when you got a headache and you take some kind of pain medication, at some point the headache's gone and you're feeling better. When you're getting this protocol and you've got multiple symptoms, or, or even one, and the thing goes away and you came in devitalized, all of a sudden you recognize that. So it's simply a matter of the, of the person, the athlete, male or female, being conscious of that of that improvement. And right, I, knowing I they're you, healing, think, right? Knowing you're healing, right, right there, noticing right. the difference. Stuff just changed right. exactly which is why I always made a habit, and I still do to this day, of walking around the track at Menlo, uh, at least one well, at least one wrap, a lap around the track when I was treating guys at the, uh, you know, I was actually working in the, in the dorms a lot. And, and if it was across the street, the place where I treated you uh, later on, Nate, uh, I would walk around the block with them. And essentially, sometimes it would take, during that walk around the block, it would take them to recognize, whoa, man. And you know, then you get questions like, hey, man, can I, can I smoke a joint tonight? <laughs> yeah, can I have some drink? Yeah. You know, can I get laid tonight? I mean, the questions that, that, that come out, I mean, they're, they're alive again. I mean, these are, these right. are kids. They're alive, you know? But in, in terms of what I would say is the initial 33 cases that came out of the uh, uh, the original uh, field trials at Menlo and Cal both, when uh, Coach Doug left, uh, he went over to Cal, and that's how I got involved in Cal, and I, I didn't even really want to say his name. I don't want people to call him up, ask him the questions. But uh, you, you know who I'm talking about, Nate, and I'm sorry to do that to you. But uh, but uh, this is a three-time All-Pro tight end uh, NFL guy, you know. And uh, but basically, the um, the recovery time uh, half the cases were self-declared fully recovered in 24 hours. So uh, of the 33 guys, and 78 percent of those guys were medically cleared uh, to recover within 72 hours and return to play. Uh-huh. It's much much faster than the the now. Were, were some of those guys faking it? All those things they could have been. But I will put this protocol up against anything that they're using today. It doesn't make any difference. You well, can see it. Let's, you can feel it. Let's let's talk about some of those results because the percentages you just described are are percentages that anyone who's treating NFL players from the inside and wanting them on the field would love to have. These guys would love to have that kind of treatment. However, you've met some resistance from the establishment. So, <laughs> why is that? Well, I'm sorry to say, but uh, uh, let's just say we're we're dating uh, somebody that we like, uh, you know, whatever your whatever your uh, selection is, and somebody else comes along and elbows it in, you know, uh, it's uh, you're being replaced. And if this is your livelihood, that's not a fun thing to see happen. Right. So it's not so, a fun thing at all. Yeah, I mean that's that's something that I learned about. Um, trainers and doctors in the NFL is they are good old boys. They're part of the organization. A lot of them have been there for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Yeah. I know the Denver Broncos um, head trainer, his name's Steve Antonopoulos. He goes by Greek. He's about 148 years old now, I think. Um, <laughs> nice guy. Forever. He's related to somebody in my in my, my church spiritual family. Oh, wow. Uh, I didn't know he was a man of God. And she, well, I don't know that he is. She is. But, but but she basically said, I know Stephen is like, he's a trainer. Listen, uh, I went to school with Bob Lamont, and he referred me in, the, in 1999. He referred me to the, he was doing players at the time, and now he's just doing GMs and Gruden and stuff like that. He's well, an agent, Gruden, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he was definitely, definitely an agent when we played basketball together. And he referred me to the head trainer of the Green Bay Packers. Man, these guys do not want to talk to you at all. Mm-hmm. I recently... Uh, let me avoid the names here, guys. But uh, Nate, I think I might have mentioned you. I have made two trips to uh, to National Football League meetings uh, with with head coaches, and the most recent one met with the, the medical staff most concerned with concussions. Mm. And one guy jumped up and down at the information, and unfortunately, that guy is no longer with us. But the other guy definitely did not like that, and that particular person 
you know, is uh, uh, whatever for whatever reason he saw me in the light that, that's not favorable. So uh, yeah. I, I, I entered the uh, uh, I entered a, a lot of contests. I've made a lot of calls. I mean, basically, you're not a traditional medical guy. Uh, get out of here. You yeah. know, I might as well be calling up Paul and I can fly. Yeah, sure. And the NFL, what is, you go. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. What? So we've never, I don't think we've ever broken this down for our listeners on this show, but what is the current NFL protocol for dealing with a concussion? Basically, the concussion protocol, and by the way, the concussion uh, recovery pro- protocol was named that before the concussion protocol came out. I just was happy when I saw them finally using it. It started with the NFL, I believe, and then it's now to all, all major sports and, and amateur sports as well, and even peewee sports. But the concussion uh, recovery protocol is different because it, it includes the recovery thing, but the concussion protocol is the seeing, recognizing, sighting of a person that's being concussed, and in you guys' case, they take your helmet away as soon as you right. go in the blue tent. You guys may not have had blue tents to go in. I don't even know if they, what they did with you, but uh, you know, essentially, if you didn't say Red Brick Broadway, as a famous uh, uh, medical guy used to say to his uh, his concussed players, if you get concussed, just say Red Brick Broadway, and we'll put you back in the game. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I, I don't know if you've read that, but it, uh, it's an unfortunate piece of the history of of uh, football in America. But essentially, it's a five step program where you're pulled. From the uh, you're pulled from the contest. No more whatever got you. You know, if you hit your head on a low branch riding a bicycle, you should go in the concussion protocol. Okay, so basically, you you once you're examined and diagnosed, you go home and rest until the symptoms go away. It's a really interesting way to deal with something. Would you do that with a compound fracture, with an anxiety attack, with a with a bleed out? Uh, you know, with, with uh, you know a stroke, go home and so, come back when you're single. That's what we do. But yeah, you go through a five-step process. I'm sorry to go a little slow there. You go through a five-step process of gradually returning to physical activity on a daily basis or on a uh, accomplishment basis to where you can finally go back out on the field, run routes, uh, you know, take snaps and, and bang into your, your other guys. If you pass that without symptoms, you're, you're clear to go back in the game. So there is no modality, there is no technique being used to quicken that healing process. I, not that I'm aware of, and I know, uh, again, there's a lot of really good people right. that are doing a lot of good things. There's a lot of vestibular uh, you know, balance therapy going on. Uh, I mean, Joe Namath said 176 dives into a hyperbaric chamber helped him out. That's a little slow for me, you know. but uh, I, uh, Bill Romanowski is big on that too. There's a lot of people doing a lot of work that, that is attempting to help but there's nothing that's proactive, safe, swift, and effective that I'm aware of. Right. You, uh, you've you listened to a few episodes with us, so you know Eben and I came from the cannabis space, and you know we've had some doctors on here who have talked about uh, cannabis, and we've done our research as far as cannabis as a neuroprotectant and being involved in neurogenesis. Um, there's some promising studies going on in Israel with rat models um, and the brain and cannabis and traumatic brain injury. So do you know anything about that? Would you suggest that someone who's dealing with what you're talking about, a concussion, a change in consciousness, and who has already initiated the shift, is, is cannabis all right for them? Does it help? Does it hurt? You know something, guys? Uh, the answer is a resounding yes. I noticed back in the day that uh, at Menlo that drinking was not okay, guys. Uh. It's not okay. Uh, smoking weed is okay. I mean, I, it wasn't like I gave them permission, and I would never initiate that, but they would all ask me. You know, mm. because I wasn't, I didn't have to respond to the, anybody. The coaches would say, "Hey, Craig, how's his, his knee?" Or uh, the coaches would do that. But I, I'm not. I'm independent. I was completely independent, so they knew they could trust me. I wasn't going to rat them out if they were not looking good, or you know, and whatever it was. But uh, the weed never seemed to be a distraction. Is that scientific? No, it's not. But it's, it was my observation on a lot of cases. Sure. Well, you know, it's starting to be scientific. Yeah, we're, we're starting to get these little studies that are putting together the puzzle. No one's really, really studied it here in the U.S. because it's Schedule One, as you know, and it's hard exactly. to study. And the banks won't touch it either because, you know, it's it's illegal money essentially. So a lot of the studies are happening overseas, but it's really important that we contribute our own anecdotes, our own experiences guys, with it. Yeah. Uh, you, what you guys are doing is amazing. I mean, I, I looked at, you know, I go to the website and I look at the about, and I see what you're trying to do. And essentially, you're trying to improve the lives of guys who have been in sports that may, whose lives may not necessarily be improved following sports and, uh, or, or suffering things. And I, I absolutely and totally believe uh, in, in the, the CBD thing. Uh, and, and it's been crazy. I mean, I was an original member of Normal back in, when was that? Man? I don't <laughs> wow. Know 
they nice. still exist. That's cool. Yeah, they're still out there for sure. And High Times Magazine. Yeah. I mean, that was the, the hell with Playboy. Look, look at this, you know. <laughs> I love and, it. Uh, yeah, no, it was, talk about uh, a groin uh, pull. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> a lot of groin <laughs> yeah, pull in there. Yeah, a whole bunch of them. <laughs> but but the, uh, the the what you guys are doing and and, and being advocates and I, I loved Kyle Turley. I, I watched him when he when he was playing. And I saw him and man, it looks like he's gone through some uncomfortable changes. But whatever kind of improvements, hey guys, it's about making the place better, making the planet better, making health uh, more optimal. It's not about you know being in servitude to a system that doesn't work. And and God bless everybody who's in all the systems because I think they're trying initially. But man, if you're making enough money to make a payment on your third wife's Mercedes uh, by doing something that's not that helpful, uh, you know what are we doing here? You know, right? right. What well, do what you touched on is the life after sports stuff. I mean, for football players in particular, there is that boogeyman in the corner, um, CTE. It's a disease called chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Apparently, you can't discover it until you cut open the brain post mortem. That allows the NFL to deny its existence essentially and blast any science that comes out saying that the sport causes brain damage. But here we are, the players paying attention on the sideline and we're paying attention to the studies being done by Ann McKee and her team and it suggests that pretty much every brain you're cutting open that played football has CTE, has these tau protein tangles in them. I know you have probably some pointed thoughts on CTE, uh, how to maybe avoid it, what are the markers, and what can guys like us do who are already done with all that contact and are trying to live a pain-free, healthy life. And then, Craig, before you launch into your answer, an addendum to that question, you know, in that study coming out of Boston University, you know, they talk about 87% of all football players from high school through to the NFL are testing positive for CTE. There are many stories of high school kids committing suicide. These are high school football players committing suicide before they even graduate high school. And it's my estimation that those are the kids that have suffered concussions from the time they were, you know, seven, eight, nine years old playing Pop Warner football and never even have a chance to play in a high school football game because of all the concussions they've suffered. So what what are the triggers, as we sort of talked about earlier, that set a guy into full-blown CTE at such an early age compared to these guys who, you know, make it into their 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, before they're they're really hit with it. Yeah, uh, great points and uh, something I'm happy to address. You guys gave me a lot there, so help me if I if I uh, miss one, just remind me. For sure. What I would what I would say is I, I recently began working with MMA athletes, and uh, compared to football and hockey and soccer and all the rest of the athletes in the world, these guys are really uninformed. I am literally amazed. The key to stopping uh, CTE. There's a new outfit. I'm not going to name, name them, but they've got a drug that's worked with rats, and they're basically saying the drug is going to prevent CTE. It's a pretty big statement. And, and, I, and so I, I went to their website to look at it and see why they're saying that. How can you say that? You know, most people are not even clear about what it is. And, and the answer was um, they're, they're, stopping the, they're, they're eliminating the symptoms of concussions and traumatic brain injury very quickly. And their, their view is that it's all inflammation. And that their their particular drug, which they're looking for, uh, you know, uh, clearance through, uh, you know, the, the channels that you got to go through to do that, uh, looks like it works with rats, and hopefully it works with human beings. But to say that you uh, will prevent CTE by stopping the symptoms, I actually believe that. So I CTE that. So, is it, so CTE is about prolonged inflammation of the brain that basically that stays inflamed and never has a chance to heal. I would say that's included, Nate, but definitely not the factor. What it is is it's prolonged absence of life force. Wrap mm. a wire around your finger. Wrap a wire, literally, a, a, a copper wire around your finger, and how long is it before the finger turns color or becomes painful or starts looking wilty or turns into a squashed prune and dies? Mm. And people are going to say, well, it's circulation. No, no, no. The circulation doesn't work without the life force. Nothing works without the life force. I... I on the website, I, I note that the difference between a newborn and a stillborn baby is the presence or absence of a life force. Same thing with a cadaver or a coroner. You know, it's that you know, visitor to a cemetery and a resident of the cemetery. Somebody <laughs> with, 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 with vital signs on the table and somebody without. The difference is the life force. The trouble is, guys, it's formless and you can't prove it. You know, if, if, is there any scientific study saying that, that there's an afterlife 
or that there's a creative creative divinity, or that there's a human spirit. There's nothing. And chances are, don't wait around for it. You know, it may not be coming real quick. Hopefully, the people will be able to put it together. The quantum physics guys look like they got a leg up there. But uh, essentially, the best thing you can do is be your own guide. And this is what's really hard. It's like uh, you're, you're out on a date and you're doing something with a gal that looks great. And all of a sudden, the boy says that you shouldn't be going too fast. If you got a concussion and you're in a game, you shouldn't wait for anybody anywhere else to tell you anything. You walk out of the game. How many guys are going to do that? You can't do it. That's the thing. There's so much on the line. You know, yeah. you get out exactly. there and it's like the culmination of this life's pursuit. And you have your town on your back, your family, all the players you ever played with, all the fans, everyone. And you got to be out on that field because we've, we've seen what happens in the media when a player pulls himself out of the game. Oh. These fuckers, oh, these fuckers in in Bristol, Connecticut, in ESPN Studios, eviscerate the guy. Just dismantle him. Yeah, oh, he didn't. He doesn't want it enough. You know, he doesn't. Want, you don't know how lucky you are to be out there. Now get back out on that field. And so the stigma is so huge when a guy comes out, especially a quote unquote invisible injury like a concussion is. It's not a yep. bone sticking out of your arm. You know, this like you said, it's a change in consciousness. Yeah. It, it really, and that's why I brought up Ben earlier because Ben can pull out. They're not going to cut Ben. You know, two weeks ago he had a concussion. Three weeks ago in the preseason he had a concussion. He's walking along the sideline, happy as a clam. He's talking to Tomlin and his you know, other people, and he's doing fine. The key is you got to walk away from it or know that you're risking uh, you're you're risking your future health. That's really the key, and it's a really hard thing to do. Yeah. It, it, so that's why the protocols and then the sideline observers and the and uh, all all the I'm sorry to say, frightening studies uh, that are that are you know my my spiritual teacher always said alert people don't alarm them whatever it might be you know I mean you yell fire in the middle of a the theater what happens you got you got to you know if you can say to people we've got some uh, we've got some difficulties going on here we'd like everybody to uh, exit the theater as quickly as possible right. hold on better than yelling fire so to call it a traumatic brain injury or to uh, um, Frighten somebody with the, the potential outcome of that is, is going too far as far as the education is concerned. It's incomplete because they don't know. But the real key is um, one time, if you go through the windshield at 100 miles an hour, not only did you have a disturbance in consciousness and a disruption in function, you, know, you probably have a cracked skull, uh, what's known as an open head injury, and you may be on your way out. It, it may be all over for you. But the point is, is that if you are concussed, um, essentially, you need to not have be in a prolonged period where the life force is no longer there. Mm. Everybody's brain, I relate it to a, a skyscraper, guys. It, everybody's brain is like a skyscraper, 100 stories with a, with a million apartments in there and, and, and tens of thousands of electronic devices. Somebody's jiggling the plug like we've all done with a lamp. that It's lit and we're trying to get a stuck plug out of the wall. You know, and it's flickering on and off. If that happened into a, into a, a, a skyscraper, how many of those functions, all of those are brain functions, you know, might be things we never heard of and never will heard of. How many of those things are at risk? Well, for each person, their brain, depending on their, on their, on their evolution, depending on their, on their nutrition habits, depending on what intoxicants they use, depending on their attitude, literally, thoughts are things. If you're watering, you better be watering the flowers, not the weeds, right? So essentially, all these things will determine where a brain is vulnerable or where it's not. And somebody could just have had a bad headache. Uh, the morning before a game, and they got whacked, and uh, and in the, in the in the game, and that that absence of life force keeping that area afloat and, and properly uh, balanced is is no longer there. You, that's why you want to pull out right away. And you, and like you say, Nate, uh, you can't do it. it uh, you're you're pressured into it. The yeah. MMA guys, I'm 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 nervous about what I see with the MMA guys. Hmm. Very nervous. Well, one thing we do talk about on this episode or on this show a lot is kind of the difference between the realities of, of linemen and the skill position players on the outside. The, the skill position players are the ones that get rules made to protect them, uh, quarterbacks, receivers, you know, defenseless receiver hits and shit like that. But these guys are not the ones who are having the highest rate of CTE. The highest rate of CTE is happening down in the trenches with the offensive and defensive linemen who are engaging in sub-concussive hits every single fucking day. And a lot of them might not be symptomatic at all. And so for guys like that, is there any advice you can give them on personal maintenance of brain health that they might even be able to do on their own without alerting the training staff. Because like you said, these guys are not sure. going to say, hey, I'm a little dizzy today, coach. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, instead, what can they do? Can they actually do this technique on themselves? What What should they look for and how can they treat it? I, I, would, say, I would say the things that you guys are looking at, CBD, 
supplements, you know, the, the supplements that we know that help the brain, or at least uh, I, I don't know where science is on things like ginkgo biloba, but that's one that I take. I love that. Uh, mm-hmm. Meditation. I mean, basically, yeah. guys, I think the healing comes from the silence. And the mm-hmm. silence is the core of who we are. And basically, if you're in touch with that, uh, that is that, that's a fabulous thing. What I what my goal is mm. is I want this. I, I'm I'm recruiting, not even recruiting. I'm looking for a couple handfuls of of competitive professional athletes, pros only, people who can see that this works and say so. And that's that, that, that's not about me. I mean, if you look at my website, uh, you know, remuneration and payment is by donation. So you know, there's, it's not about a five or ten thousand dollar charge for a service. If I can get that established out there and you guys the pros know amongst each other what to do then that changes the game that changes the whole landscape and then what i want to do is i want to go to guys your age i'm just going to guess you're about the same age because uh you, you were in the, in the nfl for six years each i want to go to guys if you're concerned uh you know and you don't have to answer this but if you're concerned that you may have cte symptoms i want to treat a couple of handfuls of you guys three times in 10 or 14 days depending on my judgment of, you know, are, are your concerns more mental or are they actually something that look like it could be problematic and see if we get a response. In other words, if, if after two weeks of inactivity physically, vigorously elsewhere, you, you, uh, you know, I don't even want to say your, your ages, but guys of your age are uh, feeling experiences. Then what we're doing is we're expanding the fact that we can restore uh, areas of the brain uh, that may not be, they may not be diseased or dysfunctional, but they may not be allowing the proper inflow of life force. So, and then I would like to go to the guys that are, that are suffering and do the same thing there and see if we can get the Jim McMahons, the, you know, the, yeah. the Tony Dorsett. I'd like, I'd like to go to those guys. And so it's, uh, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a, it's not a crazy plan. It's not a no. uh, out there plan because no. the protocol exists. I'm here to tell you this, guys, about the protocol itself. I said this to, to Nate on the phone recently. If somebody says, are you really serious that uh, this works? And I would say on otherwise healthy competitive athletes, yes. Uh, how serious are you? And I would say checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd love to share your information with this uh, group my wife is part of on Facebook. Um it's over 2,000 women, wives of former players, uh, all dealing with these issues, man. You know, uh, these guys are slipping into early onset dementia. It's, it's a total lack of life force uh, issue for most of these guys. And what's really fascinating listening to you talk about it and, and putting that up next to, you know, the stories that my wife tells me of these guys that these wives are telling sharing these stories just these are women like you said man the love of a mother these women are sharing information with each other to find the answer to how they can help heal their their husbands and heal their families and what's interesting is there's a handful of guys who are in their 70s who are living full and happy lives now why is that you have to look at and to me you know these aren't these are guys who played eight eight plus years in the NFL. These are guys who sustained a, a shitload of injury and most likely concussions playing in the day and age of, you know, steroids and, you know, using your head full force trying to kill each other out there. And so I think that, you know, what you're talking about has huge value in this community. Um, and just to begin with. So, you know, as a starting point, I'd love to Get your information up there for these wives to, to check out, to give you a call, to message you, share their stories, and perhaps even come and get treated by you. I think it would be, it would be huge. Well, Evan, the only, the only difficulty with that, uh, and I definitely appreciate where you're going, the only difficulty is that is I am a one-man band, and there's only so much that a guy could do. I'm, I'm well in the retirement uh, age, and what I want to do is I want to focus on the pros right now and then go to the, the the pros that are fairly retired and the ones after that. What I'm hoping is that uh, some athletes out there are going to see this and want to take care of their brothers. And these guys are guys that got uh, extra thick wallets, and they're going to say, "Hey, I would like to fund whatever it is that you need to be funded." Here's the here's the held down uh, a button of, of 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 optimism here. There's 25 or 30 thousand people on this planet trained to do the Bowen technique. And essentially, I had meetings with them three years ago when we were anticipating this information being rolled out a little sooner than that. And they are prepared, at least mentally and somewhat uh, on paper, 
to uh, to uh, adopt what I've done into their their training. Uh, that's in the United States. I'm I'm looking forward to speaking with the people in Australia, which is where this originated, uh, with the with the Australian people and see. I don't know how many people are active. I don't know how many people are qualified enough to to move on. This is not a complicated procedure. I, honestly, guys, if we were off somewhere in a cabin in the mountains uh, fishing and doing whatever we we're doing, I could show you guys this uh, on each other in, in a weekend. So maybe, so maybe so maybe we can generate some interest here, some excitement, and then we can have people come to a seminar that you can maybe teach, and they can go back yeah. to their teams and teach and, and and be able to administer these techniques. You know what, uh, guys, these are fabulous ideas. I don't know where this is going to go. Uh, I, I really don't know where it's going to go, but I know this, that after 22 years, 22 years ago, literally uh, two months from now, in November, was when the first three guys, Adam and, and Brian and Joe, came to me with their concussions. And now 22 years later, last night, uh, last year the website was put up there. I need to draw attention to the website. I've had five responses on this website in a year, and four of them were for marketers saying, hey, man, you want to draw a business? No, I don't really <laughs> want to draw business. I'm not, I'm not looking to draw business. I'm already... I mean, if, if, if I, you had a seminar in mind or somebody wants to come up with that or I need to show the Bowen people uh, what it is that I'm doing and, you know, they, they, they know what I'm doing essentially. But uh, there's, there's, I, I, what I want to do is I want to have a concussion resolution specialist in every community. That's my goal. Mm. So tell us, tell us about the website. It's concussions with an S dot, dot info. Dot info. Concussions plural. Dot info. Yeah. And, and, and what and what can our listeners uh, expect to see when they when they hit this website? Basically, literally anything you need. No other website like this because it, it, it defines concussions in it. And I'm not saying redefines because I'm not trying to upstage anybody in the world. But this is a, this a site. The entire homepage specializes in topics only about recovery. There is no talk of recovery in the world because all the money, millions of dollars, possibly easily ten maybe even over $100 million, is going where? Prevention and diagnostics. Right. I, believe some, I believe some proteins in the blood or something, well, eventually they'll pull something that, that shows uh, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of head devices, a lot of eye monitoring devices where they're going to be able to spot concussions. But basically, when you spot them, what are you going to do? You're right. going to send them home. Right. You know? And, sure. your, you and your website is, it will give people the tools that they need to recover. Well, it, it gives them the knowledge that the tool exists. What we need is people to apply it. Got it. And you're doing that, man. Is there is there any other place people can reach you? If they want, if our listeners want to reach out to you for a treatment or talk to you about someone they know who's injured with a concussion or has an idea of how you could get in there with some of these pro teams, where can they reach you? I will tell you, Nate, I don't think I'm going to get in with any pro teams. <laughs> uh, that's why I'm going... That's where I'm going to. I mean, I've been through this uh, enough times, you know. I mean, I got a, I got a, a text from a major uh, pro football coach who everybody would know if I mentioned his name, and he said uh, to me, they're not interested in your ideas, meaning the organization. Right. And what they meant was, what they, what they meant was the medical staff. And, I, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. I, I just want to be very clear that, I, uh, again, I'm not looking to start a business. I'm looking to get the information out there. And the very best way this could be done, let's roll the clock back 10 years. Nate. I was heartbroken when I read uh, your book that you were sitting there with your I, – I, I see you sitting up in bed with your head back uh, against the headboard or the wall uh, going through hell for three days uh, with a concussion. And it's it just that we never had that problem at Menlo. As a matter of fact, most guys that I was treating regularly didn't get concussions. So you, you look into that, you know, whatever that brings. But I was heartbroken because you came out and saw me for hamstrings after you had the, the, the PRP treatment. Yeah. And, you know, we did, we did that. But I was, I was heartbroken. It was like, oh, man, what I need is guys that are pros right now. It doesn't have to be NFL. It can be any major pro sports. I gotta, I'm got. i looking for Max Holloway. Last year, I would have loved to have seen A.J. Fedorowicz, the yeah. tight end for the Houston Texans. Three right. concussions and he retired. Right. Come on, man. Get this butt, Get this guy out here. You right. know. And, and Max Holloway, all I can say is, Max, please don't fight. Please don't fight with a three-month. The longer it takes to recover, we didn't get into this. I know we're probably running short of time. The longer it takes to recover, like muscle memory, that's a neuroendocrine recovery pathway. It's going to be part of or entirely govern your next concussion. So mm. a long recovery is not a great thing. You want to get rid of the symptoms immediately. Right. Guys, I can't deal with all the people. Evan, you're the group of, of uh, women that you're talking about with all these guys. I can't deal with them. Uh, what I need is if I had 10 guys like you roll the clock back 10 years ago, I, each of you and, and eight more guys, 
Uh, that would be all it would take. You guys would tell your teammates, they would tell other teammates, boom, the word is out. And then that would spark the funding to bring our, we need a bunch of these Craig guys. We can't just be relying on this old man running around here. And yeah, well, I think, I think you've got to, you've got to pass down your, the technique to as many people as you can, man. Absolutely. So I, I think that's the way to go. If Nate and I can help you facilitate some sort of seminar, you know, I, I, I mean, shit, man, I think that's what we got to do. I love it, and I'm thrilled about it. The best thing right now would be any connections in pro sports uh, that, that, that you guys are aware of. I mean, what, what needs to happen, thank God for Tom Brady and, and Russell Wilson, because they got outside the you're trapped here. Uh, thing you know they bring in their own nutritionists their own repair guys their own uh you know consultants whatever it is and that i believe that has changed the face of sports i know that there was a guy who was playing with a, a west coast team uh and uh, uh nate somebody you and i know very well was saying i think you should take a look at this guy but uh the minute i said he should come see me rather than me go see him uh the team said uh we don't want we don't want to do that you know, so the team the team got involved. And they're they're very you know it's it, unless you're Russell or Tom or somebody that's of that that caliber, uh, you know that they they will restrain you. So the the what I'm doing, guys, is I'm making. If I get kidnapped by Martians tomorrow and I'm gone, that website is there. <laughs> any Bowen any any Bowen therapist on the planet can take what it is that I know and speak to my brothers and the people that are close to me about what about what extra I'm I'm doing on that. And this thing is out there. That's my goal number one. Get the knowledge out there. Wow. If we can get it confirmed by pros, that's the next step, guys. That that somebody will literally the, then the wallets will open up. The wallets will open up, and it's like, what do we got to do to fix this guy? Uh, what do we got to do to set this situation up? Like I say, twenty-five or thirty thousand Bowen therapists uh, are uh, w- in a weekend could learn to do what I'm doing. Well, I hope, Craig, that you don't get kidnapped by Martians, but if you do, all this information is going to be available to people on your website, concussions dot info. Craig Matamo, it's been awesome having you on. Awesome chatting with you as always. You're a good friend and a healer. Keep up the good work, and we're going to help you spread the word. Thanks, man. Appreciate appreciate you guys a ton. If I get kidnapped, I'll see you in the afterlife. All right, man. No doubt, brother. Thanks, Craig. All right, guys. Thank you. Later, bud. Later. Bye-bye. Well, thanks a lot, Craig. Uh, it's been awesome. And, uh, you know, you hear the music. You know what the time it is. That's right, everybody. You know what to do. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, all the great podcasts, channels. We are there, Caveman Poet Society. Check out our website, CavemanPoetSociety.com. You can find all the latest episodes. You can find Nate's books, cool stuff that we're up to. We're going to start putting more content up there sooner rather than later. Also, our Instagram, at Caveman Poet Society. On Twitter, at Caveman Poet Pod. And that's about it. You guys know what it is. Eat right. Think right. Be right. We love y'all. Everybody did a really good job on the pod. Said everybody did a really good job on the pod. Said everybody did a really good job on the pod. Said everybody did a really good job on the pod. So Eben Yo. did a really good job on the pod. Nathan yeah. did a really good job on the pod. Craig Matamo Craig, Craig, did a Craig. really good job on the pod. Yeah, you did, Craig. Jed, you yeah. did a really good, good job on the pod. As always, Jed. Everybody did a really good job. Everybody did a really good job. Everybody did a really good job. Everybody did a real good job on